Now, as more information comes out about this catastrophe, so many people are naturally asking, uh, why even go down there in the first place? And that's something our, our next guest has a lot of experience with. Uh, his name is Dr. Michael Guillen. He is the former news uh, science editor for ABC News. He was, he was actually the first person to report from the wreck of the Titanic back in 2000, uh, that two and a half miles below the surface. Uh, doctor, thanks so much for joining us. You had a pretty terrifying accident during that voyage. Uh, in fact, doctor, if, if we can, let's just play a, a quick clip uh, from that report. As we approach the stern of the ship, we're suddenly caught up in a strong underwater current that pushes us towards one of the gigantic 21-ton propellers. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at the size of that thing. Look at the blade. It's still clean like it's brand new. But when we try to back out... Oh I felt a little bit of a boom, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh, look at these things. Oh my gosh. God, look at the size of these things. Oh my gosh, so are we stuck or what? As this graphic shows, we appear to be somehow wedged beneath the wreck of the stern. Uh, Dr. Guillen, I mean, I can't even fathom what must have been going through your mind in that moment. You know, Gaudi, I, I, I've had to relive it all this week, and um, it's agonizing for me because I feel such a kinship to the people who lost their lives. And I, it's interesting in, in listening to PH's stepson, who so eloquently spoke about him and his love of the ocean. I was just the opposite. When I received the invitation to be the first TV correspondent to report from the Titanic, my inclination was to decline because I have a deathly fear of water. I don't even know how to swim. And so I thought, Ugh, of all the things, I don't want to do that. But then, of course, it's my job. So I went down there and everything went smoothly. I mean, we the dive took us about two and a half hours down. We went to the hull of, of the, uh, the bow of the ship. We had a moment of prayer. But as you saw on that videotape, we got caught between the poop deck, the inverted poop deck, and the blades of this giant propeller. Uh, the, the propeller's much bigger than our sub. And, <clears throat> you know, it's like when you're driving on a beautiful sunny day and you think you're on top of the world, you're admiring the scenery, and then, boom, all of a sudden, somebody just T-bones you. That was my initial reaction. It's like, wh what just happened? Wait a minute. And once that was clarified, I understood that we were in a, in a, in a life-threatening situation. But as a scientist, I immediately started wondering, well, there has to be a way out of this thing, right? But very quickly, I realized there wasn't. And hitting that brick wall uh, made me feel enormously sad, as if the, the entire weight of the Atlantic Ocean above me, two and a half miles of water, just kind of descended on my shoulders. I'll never forget that. It was terrifying. Yeah. I, I can imagine. You know, I, I got to say, I'm not sure if other people at home watching this might be struck by this, but... When we see the footage from back in 2000, we see the sub that you got in, and then we see the sub that just went down. Again, we're talking a 20-year difference. Uh, you'd yeah. think that uh, maybe 20 years would give us something that looks a little bit more technologically advanced, but uh, did you feel safe in the sub that you were in, and would you have gone down if your younger self was offered a chance to go down with the, the vessel that we just saw go down, Titan? It's a great question, and it's an important question, so I'm going to answer it very carefully. The, the vessel I was in was a Russian vessel. They're still in operation. And those vessels, there's Mir 1, Mir 2, Russian, uh, 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 Mir is the Russian word for peace. These were originally designed uh, for scientific research. They're still being used for scientific research. So they were very serious vessels created by very serious-minded people for a very serious purpose. And imagine this, Gaudi, that the, uh, the vessel that I was in survived the impact. That shows you how strong mm -hmm. these things are. They, these have been up and down, up and down hundreds of times. As I say, they're still in operation. The French have similar deep submersibles. By contrast, uh, Titan was designed from the get-go for tourism. It's a big difference. And I think some of the questions you are asking PH's stepson are very, very appropriate. Um, was everything done to make certain that that vessel was seaworthy? So it's not as if we haven't advanced in our technology in 23 years since I was there. It's just that this particular company decided that they wanted to use as many off-the-shelf parts as possible. I don't know if the CEO, I'm not familiar with the company. It's the first time I heard about him. But I've heard a few things from the CEO that concerned me. He, his Apparently part of his mission was to show 
uh, that he wanted to use these kind of off-the-shelf uh, parts. He talked about getting something from Camper, Camper's World, using a game controller. These are things that are very different than the situation I was in. This is a scientific research vessel piloted by a very experienced former Russian MiG pilot, and the captain of the ship, the Academic Keldish that we were on, was a very serious-minded man. So it's a very different thing, Gaudi, and it's going to be very interesting in the days and weeks ahead when these very tough questions that need to be asked and we demand honest answers, uh, we'll see what falls out from all of this. And Dr. Guillen, your report will go down in history. And I got to say, when that happens in your report, you realize that the captain that you're talking about, the pilot of that sub, hands down saved your life. You have two and a half oh. miles of, of water above you. I hate to ask, but you're familiar with pressurization at that level. Uh, do you think yeah. what happened here um, was painless? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, look, Gaudi, I'm going to be honest with you. When I first started, when I was being interviewed by reporters all over the world and they were asking me what happened, this was, you know, at the beginning of the week, I looked at the evidence. I'm a scientist. I look at evidence and I formulate a hypothesis. And it was very clear to me from the get-go that this was a catastrophic failure of the entire vessel. I even used that word. It's interesting that the rear admiral used that word today in his press conference. I was saying that all week. Why? Can't get into all the reasons why we probably don't have time. But it was clear to me that this was not just a communications failure because this vessel was designed so that the ballast would automatically jettison after 24 hours, whether the mission was successful or not. That didn't happen. It also had a backup, electrical backup. That didn't happen. And then it had yet another backup where you could manually jettison the ballast so that this thing could rise to the top safely by pneumatics with compressed air. That didn't happen. So it was obvious to me that this was a catastrophe that involved not just communications, but the entire vessel, and this is what happened. It was down, it, it happened about an hour, 43 minutes in. So it didn't even make it to the bottom. It takes typically two to three hours to get to the bottom. So what clearly happened here, it's, it's about as clear as it can get, is that one hour, 40 some minutes into, while it's still in the water, about two thirds of the way down, it. Uh, developed some kind of a structural failure on the pressure vessel. It could could have been a micro fracture that it acquired in the previous two journeys that it had gone down. Like all it, you know, the expression a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Mm -hmm. Well, in this case, this pressure vessel is only the strongest as its weakest point, and it only takes a microscopic uh, 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 weakness that you can only see with X-rays. And the ocean at that point, even at that depth, even though they hadn't reached the bottom, is pressing on you. Imagine the pressure pressing on you in all directions. Boom, and it collapsed. And so quickly, I, I, I mean, so quickly, those poor souls didn't even know what happened to them. So I consider that merciful because all of us were worried, oh my God, this is a slow death. I was down there for between a half hour and an hour, and it seemed like an eternity. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, these poor people are suffering for days. But mercifully, it was quick, Gaudi. I can tell you, quick and painless. They didn't even know what hit them. Dr. Guillen, with the perspective that so few humans on planet Earth have, uh, thank you so very much for your time and your insight. My pleasure. Thank you, Gaudi. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.